social life of the Internet of Things. Basically, it's taking the same concepts as what we see in social networking, likes, memes, trends, friends, and applies that to machines. We want users to be able to easily create connections between different machines that have different purposes but have meaning to them and be able to share that and disseminate it across the internet. Machine learning, on-demand manufacturing, these are the things that will enable the social internet of machines. What's cracking, good people? Anthony Gadget X coming at you from UCSD. I'm here to visit a friend who's got a company in the AI space. He's a part of the accelerator here at the Rady School of Management right here in UCSD San Diego. And I'm here with... Hi, I'm Olin Hyde. I'm the founder and CEO of Inglu. Uh, we are a company that uses machine learning technologies to accelerate sales. And so we're a lead generation company using artificial intelligence. And so we use a lot of graph theory, and this will probably be a little bit technical. If we pan around the room, we'll see the rest of our team is in the middle of a meeting now. And so, uh, a little bit about, about our company real quick is there's five of us uh, started the company. Uh, three of us went to grad school here at UCSD. Uh, we're an engineering driven company and quickly becoming a sales and marketing company. So, uh, lead crunch. <laughs> Sean's pooping on in terms of service. Uh, email grabber, uh, or lead grabber. Leadcrunch.com. So all you need to do is upload your best customers and it will generate leads that look just like your best customers. And so in general, machine learning kind of works generally the same way in that we know what we want as an output, right? In this case, we want high precision leads. And so the inputs are the existing best customers. And in our case, we just want the name, and then we want a city. And the only reason we want the city is to check some here, is to verify, right? But you can just basically simplify it and say, you get the name, we can data mine the rest. And then the middle piece is the black magic, the machine learning. So a, a song I like is playing, and there are a lot of people on the dance floor. I might actually not be in the building, I might be looking at Google Maps, but I can see a little icon of dancers on top of the building, and that might be a way to get me in there. Right, and so in machine learning, or in machine intelligence, we develop models that are very specific to the domain. So the model for generating leads might be very different than the model that we use to generate um, uh, predictions or memes for, on a dance floor. Right? But the methods underneath it of how the mathematics of how we get there might have a lot of similarities. We got data coming off the camera, we got data coming off the Shazammer. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a meme between the two. Okay, so what are the features or attributes here that are likely to have high correlation? So, let's just take this point in time, so, what is the correlation for our squared value between attributes such as um, uh, people on the dance floor and say the artist, right? And that's going to have a, va a value, right? It's going to have a value, uh, say an R squared value, right? Okay. So, we can actually, one of the techniques that, that we can do, that a machine can do, and this is this is really, really early days of recommender in, engine. So right when Netflix came out, this was one of the methods they did a long time ago, is called single variable decomposition, where you have a table, and maybe up here is this is the Shazammer. The Shazammer, we've got the artist, we've got the beat structure, we've got the genre, and maybe we've got, um, uh, let's say, the key the music is written in, okay? And over here, we've got the number of people on the dance floor, 
uh, the tables and bar. Right? And so what we can do is what is the correlation between each of these things. So as this changes, as the number of changes on the dance floor, is it related to a change here? in terms of the artist. We say this is in time one, and we have this for time two, and time three, and time four, and we see all of these variables change over time. We can then find out which one is the most important, right? And so that might be one way you'd say, okay, the meme for this particular moment is everybody's going to leave the dance floor because the beat structure's changed. That's right. And so that's a way of using the data to do some engineering into the environment, right? So you say, okay, we want more people to go to the dance floor, we'll do it this way. We want, more, we want to sell more drinks, we'll do this. All of these different values that we've got here are actually streaming. And if you have a way of graphically representing those relationships, right. then sometimes the humans that are looking at that information can just make decisions based on that. Right.